Hello, we're live again. Uh, right. It's becoming a habit, this, isn't it? It is, it is. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Let's see if we can have fewer uh, technical glitches this time than we did um, just over a week ago. Uh, we'll get used to it. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Slightly different setup this time, folks, uh, in terms of where monitors are and where uh, controls are. So we'll. Uh, uh, we'll see how how we get on. It will be fine. Uh, yes, let's hope Technical so. Technical pictures are there to keep you <laughs> on your toes. <laughs> I've got enough. To, I've got enough things keeping me on my toes at the moment. Yeah, haven't we all? Haven't yeah, we all? yeah, yeah. We'll we'll come on to that a little mm -hmm. bit later. Uh, that uh, that particular issue, the elephant in the room that we're all not wanting to talk about. <laughs> so. Uh, just a reminder, folks, for anyone uh, tuning in to, uh, to the shows about what they're all about. Uh, first, uh, if you haven't done, all, done so already, please can you just take a moment to hit that subscribe button for the channel and hit the bell. It really does help how my channel appears on YouTube and I desperately need to get a thousand subscribers and uh, 4,000 uh, watch hours and all that so that I can earn some money from it because I desperately need to find some new ways to earn some money uh, these days as uh, I'll mention a little bit later. Uh, right, just so that you know, this is a live broadcast. It will stay on my channel for replay for um, at least a week. Uh, the way I'm doing it is whichever is longer, one week or a day after the next broadcast, whichever is longer on that, so that you've got the chance to watch the uh, the replay then. Which means, folks, that the last one that we did, that will be going to subscriber, to Academy members only um, sometime tomorrow. So if you haven't seen that yet, once you've finished watching this, uh, now's your chance to watch that. After tomorrow, there'll just be highlights of it left here on YouTube. The full thing will still be available to my Academy members. So that's happening. Yeah, I say the highlights will stay. Right, the other thing about these shows is do ask questions. Uh, I would have preferred it to be in the comments um, because I lost all the chat last time after the show was over uh, with uh, editing it, but uh, apparently you can't post in the comments while we're live. So please ask the questions in chat. We'll pick them up there. We'll go and have a look at them uh, in a short while. Uh, I've got a Q&A section scheduled as part of this. Nobody's given us any questions yet. So <laughs> put them in the chat. Otherwise, that's going to be a very, very short section. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'll think of some questions then just in case. Yep. Um, yeah, um, do add, uh, if you're watching the replay, put your comments in the comments field for me. I will have a look at any questions that go in there and use them in the next broadcast. So what have we got on the show this week? Well, we're going to start with the news roundup um, with photography in general, uh, news from Rick, news from myself. Uh, we got one of the highlights of uh, this one is what I'm calling the three minute Lightroom challenge. <laughs> Why on earth I thought of this one, I really don't know. I'm going to wonder why I signed up for that, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm wondering why I'm doing this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what it is, I asked uh, some of you to provide me with some raw files that neither of us had seen before the edit. Now, I've already mm -hmm. done mine. I did it earlier when Rick wasn't around so that he couldn't see how I chose to edit the image. And... Part way through the show, Rick's going to do. We're going to uh, is going to do his edit. Then we're going to play in mine. So we're both doing them independently. You'll get to see how we both edit right. this one image. I literally have no idea what the image is. Um, I know the gentleman who sent it is called Peter, I believe. Uh, yes, that's about what we'll find out. Help. Yeah, um, so. shouldn't have sold them. It was Peter's because the other four are now not going to carry on watching oh, to find will. out whose sure. it was. Oh, I'm sure um, I'm sure yeah, for the rest of you, your images will turn up in a future one. I will go through all of them um, on those. So that's coming up. I've, uh, I, when I asked last time what people want to see in these uh, live shows, 
uh, one of the things which was asked for was some uh, beginner's stuff. So I'm in the process of putting together my introduction to a digital photography course for my academy members. So each of these uh, live streams, I'm going to play in uh, one of the, the videos from, uh, from that course. Uh, so beginner level stuff. Today's is all about, um, it's all about composition, but it's one aspect of, of composition, which is the, the question of what's my subject? What's the image subject? And uh, I will build on that in future live streams and within the academy uh, with the full course, it builds uh, even more. Uh, so that's coming up in the show. Uh, your Q&A, as we've mentioned, uh, please put your questions in the chat. And if you're watching this on replay, put it in the comments and I'll pick them up ready for the next live show. Uh, yeah, the news. Big um, news about how well the uh, the photography show went this week was uh, scheduled. And then cancelled. And then cancelled. Yeah. Mm. That's why the show was scheduled for today, folks. It was because I wanted to bring some info about the photography show to it. Sadly, it's cancelled. However, I did a poster last week about the play that the one man show I'm doing. Guess what? Cancelled as well. Yep. Um, news about the cruise, my next cruise and all the information and the photos I can uh, provide you with uh, and tales. Yep. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, everything's been cancelled and I'm a little bit worried because all my all my theatre gigs um, uh, have been cancelled. Uh, to date, I've now lost three um, theatre productions that I should be photographing and that's quite a sizable uh, chunk of income uh, gone. So it's not good. It's not good at all. Um, Rick, your news. Yes. Now, uh, my upcoming events at the studio... Um, both the freezing action workshop and the studio day with Vienna Gray. Um, I've, well, haven't cancelled them necessarily, I've postponed them for now. I mean, the yeah. original dates are cancelled, yes. Um, and we all know why. Um, it's been all over the news and media, um, COVID-19. It's, it's just taking a level of responsibility um, to protect yeah. people, you know, both at home and people in general who would come in for the workshops and events just to postpone them, push them back until we know more about what's going on, until the restrictions are either hardened or lifted. You know, we don't really know what's going to happen mm. yet. So it's just taking a bit of personal responsibility, both myself and the business as well. Yeah. Uh, just mm. to hold on those things. So they will be back. Don't worry. They will be back. Yeah. It, it's the same with me. I've, mm. I, I've um, not put mine on. I was in the process of planning some and uh, decided that we, we really can't at the moment. It's, it's not responsible. Um, uh, no, it's a shame. It's a shame. I was looking mm. forward to running those and I owned an art about it for a little bit, yeah. but ultimately you've got to be responsible and everyone's got a responsibility at these times to step up and adhere to suggestions, recommendations, any restrictions and so forth. Yeah. Um, because working together is the only way we're going to get it dealt with at the end of the day. Absolutely. So, so you finally had your live stream. I did. Yeah. yeah. Fin I, when I finally got the right cable to get the camera working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you oh. use Did you use mine in the end? Oh no, it? sorry, I did. <laughs> yeah. Tell a lie. Um, I actually borrowed the camera that we're talking to now. So thank you very much for that again. You're welcome. Um, because the cable we're using now, the HDMI feed works fine with this camera. Went to use it with my DSLR, the 5D Mark IV. Uh, eh, eh, nope. Didn't want to know. Right. Uh, at best, I got a what looked like a badly cross-processed image with greens and purple hues. Ooh. Um, so I thought, right, it's probably down to the length of the cable or the cable version, mm. and ultimately it was the cable version. I need a HDMI 2, not a 1.4a. My bad. Yeah. Um, but right. you, you got a free cable out of it. Oh, right. You're not, you, <laughs> no, you don't want it back. Oh, no, right. Okay. That one, no. Hey. <laughs> um, but that technical issue has mm. been resolved, so I can now actually stream mm. using my own yeah um, if needs be yeah, yeah. right um so we'll put the link to your um live feed your live stream in the uh, the notes for this below okay. the thing so afterwards yeah, give us a few moments to get the editing done on that and get the link in there so that anyone viewing this uh, can go and find it and go and see it and go yep. and watch it all right 
Uh, yeah, you've got some information about Pixel Pro and sales and things. Yes, I mentioned this on my live stream and it was actually the initial reason why I started the live stream. And in full disclosure, I work alongside Pixel Pro at the photography show when it runs, which has, we all know has now been mm -hmm. pushed back to September. So it's not the end of it. Uh, we'll be there in September. Um, I work with them as a technical advisor on the stand, a sales advisor on the stand as well, um, on the lighting section, mm -hmm. modifiers and the stand and grip. Um, I also help out during the four days on other um, elements as well. Um, I do have a relationship with them. Um, my studio is a, in a partner scheme or try before you buy. So if you want to try their kit, you can book the studio in for a hire, come and try their lights, which I have. Um, before you buy them if you wish to. Um, so that's the, the relationship that I have with Pixel Pro. It's been a good one, it's built up over time yeah. and organically. Um, I don't necessarily see it as a sponsorship per se. Some people may read it as that and I understand, I understand, mm. I get that. Um, but I just wanna be straightforward and honest, that's my relationship with them. Currently, uh, they're running um, some photography show sales. So very kindly, um, along with many other um, exhibitors as well um, that were to show at the original dates, are running sales on their equipment and honoring the sales that they would have had at the show um, so there's varying sales on lighting equipment modifiers lighting kits um, also and bundle kits with free elements that can be provided as well so go over and have a look at those at essentialphoto.co.uk um, or just do a search for pixar pro uh, they end on the 22nd of march um, just as a, an fyi on that one again we we can put a link uh, yeah. to yeah, that yeah, in yeah. the uh, uh, in the show notes. Uh, right. Now, um, you sent me that one, so uh, I'm yeah. not sure what that uh, what the graphic's all about. <laughs> um, it's a picture of the Pika 200 mm -hmm. Pro. Uh, I mean, that's one of the sale items that they've got on um, at the moment. Uh, they also have on sale the original Pika 200, which are the units that I have. Solid mm -hmm. little lights. Uh, I'm actually in the process of making a video about those. Um, and why I like them so much. Again, I haven't been asked to do this. I'm doing this off my own back um, mm -hmm. myself. Uh, and they're a solid little light, 200 watt second light. Uh, not much bigger if really the same size as a speed light. Mm -hmm. um, you get Fresnel head, you get bare bulb. Um, the difference is, if you guys are wondering what the difference is between the standard Pika and the Pika Pro, um, other than the price, um, the Pika Pro has one tenth stop increment control, which is very nice. So picture a scenario where you've worked your lighting very close to a subject and you want to make a very, very small change in the exposure, but you don't really want to change the shadow pattern or move the light or change the fall off. You can do that within a 10 stop. Um, a lot of higher end studio strobes have that as well. Yep. Um, and it is most certainly very, very useful mm. um, to do that with. It also has a color stable mode. So a more... Um, accurate, so we say, or a more stable color balance, um, shot to shot to shot, and through the exposure range. Mm -hmm. um, so again, both wonderful little units, great for location work. Mm -hmm. If you're working by yourself, they're amazing because they're, they're nice and lightweight. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay, so next under your news was uh, you haven't fixed the date for your next live stream. <laughs> oh, put me on the spot. No, no. Um, <laughs> I need to sort a date out for my next live stream. Um, I would expect that I'll have Ian on as a guest if schedules align um, that way. Um, and given the nature of the issue that everyone's going experiencing at the moment uh, and restrictions, I would like to get some live tutorials um, done. Um, you know, some pre-recorded tutorial be done as well for the YouTube channel on my own, but it's difficult to gauge on whether I can bring someone into the studio, what the elements of risks are, what restrictions will be. So it's probably going to be a, an open floor um, conversation and live show. Date to be set, there'll be a Q&A section. If there's anything technical that gets asked, I'll rig the camera up on the set so we have some space to step back from it and maybe show something as well. Um, that can possibly happen um, and it will be a more open and fluid session, yeah. I think, um, on the next one. Uh, date to be confirmed. Sounds good. Uh, well, you already mentioned YouTube videos. You've been recording some stuff. Uh, yes. Um, what, 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 have, what have we got to look forward to on your channel? Well, I say look forward to. I have... Oh, here we go. Right. Um, I have put up a video today that's just gone live at six o'clock, um, just talking about the current situation that we're in. Um, I know you're going to touch on that yeah, at a later stage yourself. A lot of people have within the industry that mm -hmm. we're in, with other creative industries, with small businesses and freelancers, it's affecting a lot of people. 
um, mm -hmm. massive global impacts, massive local regional impacts as well, of course. Uh, and it's just to let's maintain a little bit of perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's scary. Do not ever think that you have to struggle through this alone, mm -hmm. be it worries about health, the virus or the business aspects of it as well. Yeah. If you're struggling, reach out, call a friend, sit down, have a conversation. If you can't get together, a phone call, a video chat. Um, there's people you can contact. There is, there's people mm -hmm. through associations, if you're a member of them, who you can contact for help as well. Yeah. Um, so don't struggle through alone. Basically. Yeah, and, and if you feel free to call, uh, to contact us as well. Um, Absolutely. We're, yeah. we're here to try and uh, try and help people uh, with this. Uh, we're not experts in uh, yeah. in COVID and or even business for that matter, but uh, no, uh, we're, we're an ear that you can bend um, exactly. on it. And one thing I'd like to add, which I didn't mention in mine, is if you do end up having to self-isolate, what have you, maybe it's through work recommendations, company decisions, whatever it may be, it's horrible, it's scary, I understand. Mm. Take the proper precautions, take care of each other, help each other. Um, if you're thinking of starting or have just started a business in photography or even otherwise, use some of that time to clear your plate. Um, I know it's hard to focus on things when mm -hmm. this is going on, I get that, but come out of the other side of this, and we all will. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Everyone's working together to, to get by and, and get through this. Um, have a clean slate and a clean plate. So that workflow you wanted to sort out, get that done, the backup mm -hmm. process, get that done. Mm -hmm. Any little things that you think, oh, I've been putting that off because I really don't want to do it. I prefer shooting. I prefer doing this. Mm -hmm. Get those things out of your way. Clear your headspace. Get them done and dusted, and then have at it again when you when we're out the other mm -hmm. side. Right. Okay. Um, so, I think yeah, it moves on to to my news. Um, right. Yeah, my latest uh, video up on uh, YouTube. You may or may not know it's there. Um, it's the first time I've done a uh, not safe for work video uh, on YouTube, which means you have to set your account to be um, okay to view that kind of, that type of content. Uh, so if you're not seeing it on the list of videos of mine and want to watch it, if you don't want to watch anything that includes nudity, then leave your settings as they are. I'm not offended. I'm not. I'm not bothered. But if you do. Uh, then you need to click on your little profile icon in um, uh, in YouTube and that it will drop down and right at the bottom it says restrictive mode and that will be either on or off and if that is on then you won't it won't even show you that this video exists so you have to change that and there's a video there um, it's um, a combination of um, well, I did this originally as a, an edit uh, video about how I created this image in Lightroom and the, the editing I did on it. But I've also fed in the behind the scenes footage of when the video was recorded here. Uh, the model's Rihanna Gray, fantastic model. Uh, some really interesting effects we got with it. So if that's the sort of uh, images that, that you like to work on, art news, something a little bit different, uh, go and have a look at that uh, video. That's my latest one uh, to go up there. Um, uh, this week. Right, uh, what else? Yeah, as I've already said, all my events are cancelled, postponed until further notice. Um, really sad, I was so close. Uh, I'd sent m messages to uh, uh, to a couple of models and I've had, had to say, no, I can't do it um, on there, unfortunately. Um, so what am I doing? Um, well, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on remote learning and that's partly through these live streams. I am going to try and make sure these are weekly, uh, this sort of news and question and answer and feeding in other things as well on there. Uh, but uh, for my academy members, uh, I, as of yesterday morning, a new series of Academy Bytes have been going out, which for those who don't know, these are short emails uh, with an image and a little bit of information about it appears in the inbox every other day just to try and inspire and help people and the new series is all about things you can photograph at home so if you are in self-isolation mm -hmm. these are projects 
that you don't need to go out for, you don't need to hire a studio for, uh, you can just get on with. And I had uh, feedback from uh, uh, from one person saying that he, he found just even the first one uh, helpful and inspiring and saying, can we have some more? And yes, there are going to be more. I've got a, a series plan. Next one should be coming out to the Academy members uh, tomorrow morning, if everything goes to plan. I'm also spending a lot of time now preparing uh, and conversing my face-to-face -face training into video training. So that if, if you are stuck at home, you want to learn photography, you can do that remotely. Uh, you don't have to come to the studio to do it. I'm providing the same level of training as I would do face-to-face. -face. Uh, whilst they're pre-recorded videos, and you'll see one of them later during this broadcast, um, the aim is they are still interactive. There, are, there will be things for, uh, for you to do. Uh, there will be uh, assignments to do, homework to do, submit, and you'll get feedback on it. So it'll be a true course that's available to, through the Academy. Uh, the Academy is only £6 a month. So at a time when we're all feeling the pinch, I don't feel that's a, a particularly high, uh, high price to ask for uh, beginner, beginner level training in photography. So if you know anyone who's interested, do let them know because I, I really could do with a few more people signing up on that, to be perfectly honest no, it's, with you. Uh, no, it's, it's a bargain, really. Uh, on there. Yeah, and the elephant in the room, I mean... <sighs> Rick's mentioned it, the whole thing about social distancing, COVID-19. Yeah. My next live stream is going to be Sunday nights and I'm going to try and fix on Sunday nights. It's not always going to be possible, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to do the next one and look really specifically about how this affects us as photographers. I don't want to be scaremongering with it, but I want to try and give some practical advice about what you can do in the current climate um, about um, how are we going to survive as photographers some of us have a business to worry about some of us it's a hobby some of us it's both um, and how we are going to have to adjust to that mm. some very practical advice about your equipment um, and things like that. I don't want to get ahead of myself by talking about it now uh, so please uh, keep an eye on the stream, perhaps join me on uh, Sunday night and um, I'm flying solo on that one. Uh, uh, Rick's having the night off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll watch, I'll jump in the chat. Um, Brilliant. So heckle so heckle me by just, text. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I just can't be here unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if we're just onto that, I mean, you're going to say that on the next live stream, mm. I get that. It's scary, we get it. You're not alone in this. Let's take a breath, get some perspective. You know, there's assistance and there's help out there and it, there's a learning curve with it all, but no one's by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, if you know someone who is by themselves, say an elderly local neighbor, mm -hmm. check in on them if you can do, if yeah. you feel that they're real, check in on them from distance, understandably. Um, it doesn't take a lot to arrange some shopping to be delivered if they're stuck. Yeah. You know, let's be honest. Yeah. Right, okay, let's, let's move on and the three minute challenge. Well, before we get into that, let's just have a look at the um, uh, at the chat and what's going on. Hello, Gary, uh, Ron, uh, Nick, uh, Richard, uh, uh, on there, Andy, Andy yeah, Gary. Mr. Uh, Park, how are you doing, fella? Uh, right, we'll deal with your question on uh, ND filters uh, later on, but we, we, I've clocked that. Hello, David. E evening, yeah. Kev. Um, and um, we'll deal with Andy's question as well later, I think, about studios. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll deal Do with that, that in, in yeah. the Q&A, so just bear with us on that, Andy. Um, mm. We'll hit these in the Q&A section, otherwise we'll end up just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be going off on even that. more tangents yep. um, yeah. than we are. Right, so... Um, the next bit I got scheduled, uh, Rick's kind of um, blown the ending of it, but I'm just going to show you how I selected which image uh, oh. we're going to uh, we're going to look at. So oh. <laughs> there's always one, right? Okay, so the if I find the right one to play in video, video, 
video. Right, selecting an image. So we'll watch this, and then we'll come back and I'll set Rick going on the challenge. For this three minute uh, Lightroom edit challenge, I've asked people to send me some uh, raw files for both myself and Rick to edit. I haven't seen what the images are and five people sent me files for it. So what I need to do now is to select the, uh, uh, the image that we're actually going to do the challenge with. And as you can see uh, over my shoulder, we've had images from Andy Callan, and, uh, Andy Grady, uh, Kev Pack, uh, Peter and Richard. Uh, so five files. How am I going to select them? Well, I'm going to go over to a random number generator, a minimum of one to five. I'm going to hit generate and that will tell me which one. So number four. So number four is Peter's uh, image for this week and for the challenge. So let me get that loaded up into Lightroom. And we're back and okay. we've sort of places. Right, okay, uh, Rick, I need my phone. So. Where's the mouse? That, Where's the mouse? You got your mouse, right. Let me get the timer going for you. Let's see, oh, three minutes. Three minutes. Your three minutes starts now. Okay, so we have a portrait here, 125th of a second, standard studio shutter speed, F11 ISO 135 mil. Okay. All right, let's go into develop. You're now, in develop. <laughs> um, within develop, I tend to start um, in basics uh, and get a decent white balance and so forth first. It's not too bad off the bat, um, but I do feel it could probably do with a little bit warming up. It's uh, it's coming to Lightroom at 5,000 Kelvin, thereabouts, uh, and I think it can do with just a little bit of warmth on there. Now, I don't know the lights and modifiers that we use at this point, they can affect colour. Um, let's punch in. Whites look good. That's fine. Now this will not be a full retouch. Um, let's see. Let's take down some of the highlights just a little bit. I can see some specularity on parts of the skin. Uh, We've got which two minutes you left. Would, I know, so fine. Um, which you would normally deal with in Photoshop, but that's part of how it's lit and how diffused or not that the light is. Uh, at that point, we'll just take exposure down just a little bit. A little bit of global contrast. Um, there, let's see, shadow wise. Take those down, blacks down just a little bit. And tone curve. What does it look like on medium contrast? A little bit better there. Uh, we'll drop that out. How am I doing for time? Uh, one minute twenty-four. One minute twenty-four. Uh, now I don't know. I would normally make vibrance and saturation adjustments. And that's for my cameras normally. Uh, we'll go just a little bit. Tighten up mid-tone contrast. It's nice and sharp. Um, doesn't need too much in terms of sharpening. Detail. Uh, like in default color. One minute. One minute. Let's go radius up, detail. Now, one thing that this does need is, come on Lightroom, right. Um, it's capture one instead of Lightroom. Anyway, um, we will do a little bit of a crop. I do feel that we need to be a little tighter on this as a portrait. There's a bit too much dead space um, and I don't feel it's of much um, use being there. So I'm going to crop in a little bit. Um, good cropping points, by the way, um, you know, on the arms, not too close to the wrists. Um, but I think a little bit of a tighter composition helps with that. 20 Overall, seconds. Um, nice. Um, like I say, specularity that we see on the nose, um, it can be partly to do with the makeup as well as the light source that's used there um, as well. But that's pretty much it, just some basic corrections. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit darker on the blacks there. And... Yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay. That is. Right. Uh, yeah. It's, it's hard going, isn't it? When you're trying to, to talk that. through it as well, it's very different because it does slow you down um, with what you're doing um, at that Stop. point. But not a whole lot needs doing. Exposure was good on that. It's like a bit alarm clock. <laughs> it doesn't want to stop. No. Hey, it stopped. <laughs> Finally. Like I don't want to get up yet. Sure. No. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Cool. 
Mm. Right, so now let me move this over back to PowerPoint. Yep, right, here we go. Yeah, um, I was asked to include some beginner level stuff. Uh, as I said, I, uh, this is part of the training course I'm on. It's uh, slightly longer than I wanted. It comes in at about 11 minutes in length. Um, but uh, this is um, all about identifying your subject in um, uh, when you're doing your photography. So let me find the video and uh, yeah, awesome. there we go. Welcome to the third composition and point of view video. In the previous video, we looked at uh, three guidelines which will uh, really improve your composition. And those were subject. What is it that I am going to photograph? Focus. How am I going to draw the viewer's attention uh, to that, uh, that subject? And simplify. How can I... Uh, remove anything that detracts or distracts from my image. In this video, we're going to look at the first of those in depth, and that is the subject of subject. What is it that I am trying to photograph? What's the subject of my image? What am I pointing the camera at? Why am I pointing the camera at it? Well, we normally think of this as being an object, a thing in front of the camera that we want to photograph, but it doesn't have to be. It could be an action, something that's happening in front of the camera that we wish to capture, or it could be a concept, an idea that we want to convey to the viewer. So the way we're going to do this is we're gonna look at a number of images and we're gonna to try to identify what the subject is. Now, this all starts very easy and does get a little bit harder as it goes on. So follow along and see what you, whether you can identify the subjects uh, of these images as I bring them up on the screen. So the first one here, nice simple one to start with. What do you think the subject is? Well, the answer I have is person. But some people, when they look at this, they would say that the subject is uh, the smile or the eyes, but to me it's a portrait, it's a person. Now this one's a little trickier because it could have several different subjects. It could be something nice and straightforward as a building. It, uh, it's the uh, Colosseum in Rome, so it could just be the building. Or it could be a representation of history. This is a, a big historic building. Or it could be Rome, because uh, it's iconic of that, uh, that great city. Or it could be night because of the lighting on it and the, uh, the fact that it's illuminated. It could be light, it could be night on there. But for me, the subject is the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Because this is iconic of the Roman Empire, but yet it's in decay, it's fallen down, it's partly ruined. So to me, the subject is the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. What about this one? Well, some people, when they look at it, just see a bird or an eagle. But when I give this talk uh, with Americans as part of it, something different happens. They look at it, and they say America, because the bald eagle is iconic of America. How about this uh, image? What's the subject here? Well, you might say pin up. To me, the subject is cleaning. Okay, it's done in a 1950s pin up style, but that's still the subject. What makes it an image about cleaning? Well, it's this, it's the, um, the scrubbing brush. And this brings me to a, an interesting little diversion, as it were, um, how one small detail, and if you look at it, it is really only a tiny detail in the image. 
imagine the image without the scrubbing brush there. It would look pretty silly, actually. Uh, but that one small detail changes the meaning and the subject of the image. So there's an important lesson for us. Remember the details in an, in an image are also important and they can change the meaning of it. This one's a harder one. Uh, when I do this with uh, live talks, very few people actually manage to get it. It's because it, maybe the word that I'm using with it is not the one that's used so much these days. It's called staycations, or it could be caravanning, or it could be holidays, but staycations was my subject for it. Holidaying at home. How about this? Uh, for those, uh, some people may recognise it. This is actually Crosby Beach uh, here in the northwest, and the uh, uh, the figure up here is actually uh, one of the the Gormley statues, uh, an installation called Another Place. It's not just some pervert having a, a quick look at the at the model on the beach there. But what's the subject here? Again, I'm sure most people will come up with the the same sort of theme or subject as I have, and that is of meditation, of relaxation, and of calmness. This one is a bit trickier. This one, I think you might find that you'll need a hint for it. Well, the hint I would give is where it was taken. It was made in Derry, or London Derry, and that brings a whole new meaning to this image. The theme of it, well, it's called, it's reconciliation. The statue is on a roundabout in, uh, in Derry, London Derry, and it's called Hands Across the Divide. Now, just as an aside here, it's no accident that the, um, the hands are between two buildings there. Uh, uh, the, uh, the statue is on the roundabout, and I actually walked all the way around the roundabout to try and find the correct angle to photograph this from. And when I saw the two buildings of contrasting colours, I knew that was the angle I wanted to take with it. Uh, so I, I photographed from there. There's just a little bit of me that wishes the white building was actually orange. And I did for about half a second think, shall I Photoshop it to be orange? And then I realised, no, that was an edit just a little bit too far. This is an interesting one, because whenever I show this, everyone sees the same subject, homelessness. It's uh, a shot I took outside Manchester Cathedral. And what you're looking at there is just a blanket and an abandoned tobacco pouch. And yet, even though there's nobody in the scene, it still says homelessness. And that's the power of a concept in an image where objects tell a different story by how they're arranged, uh, the fact that there is water around the tobacco pouch. Everyone sees the subject of homelessness with this image. This one, nice easy one, um, a, a brilliant model, uh, Strawberry Venom, who I've worked with uh, on and off over a number of years. And the theme for this one, I'm sure you've got it already, it's fear. Don't worry, it's not the normal effect I have on models. But here, uh, we've got the model cowering, um, which just sells that idea of the subject. It's all about the fear, it's not about her, it's about the concept. And this one, well, it's an obvious one. It's war, it's remembrance, it's sadness, it's all those things. So again, it's a concept that we're putting across in the image rather than it being about the object that's there. I have a question. Can we have multiple subjects in an image? Well, actually, I, I suppose that's the wrong question to ask. The question I should be asking is, should we have 
multiple subjects in an image. And I believe we shouldn't because it, it can lead to a form of visual confusion where the viewer is not quite sure of what they're looking at. And the classic example of this is one of my absolute pet hates in photography. It's the me in front of image. And in a future video, I'll uh, be talking a little bit more about that and about the, the techniques um, to avoid the me in front of, of the me in front of photos. What it's better to do with this idea of multiple subjects, it's better to pick one and use that to draw the viewer's attention to the other subject. So, for example, um, what's happening here is we can have um, an interaction between two subjects. So instead of having somebody just standing there in front of the pyramids or in front of the Colosseum or wherever, they might be there with a guidebook or with a camera or something like that. They're doing something. They're interacting with the scene that they're in. And if they do that, then the interaction becomes the subject rather than the Colosseum and the tourist in front of it. It's the, the it's tourism, it's photography, it's those sorts of things. So here's an example uh, that we've got. Um, a tourist in uh, Wadi Rum, uh, and instead of having him just standing there, uh, plonked in front of the scene, what I've done is I've, I've got him photographing it. So what's our subject? Is it two subjects? Is it a tourist and Wadi Rum? Or is it one subject, photography? Our next video, uh, we're still in the course of Introduction to Digital Photography. We're still doing composition and point of view. And the next video is going to be an exercise for you, all about uh, image subject. So I'll see you in that one. Okay, and we're back. So uh, thank you. Uh, right. So just to let you know that uh, that what you've just watched is a section from my introduction to digital photography course uh, which is I'm in the process of recording and they'll all be loaded up to uh, my academy uh, very shortly on there so if you're finding it helpful if you are a beginner or you know someone who's a beginner those are the uh, where you'll be able to find them um, right before we get on to questions and answers We've got a giveaway. Indeed, we have. Right, um, so let me try and show you what we've got to give away. Um, it's, right, get the right uh, option. Over shoulder. No, not go. that one. That one. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying there's a reflector growing out of my head. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> well, my head is a reflector, generally uh, speaking, as we can see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, my thanks to uh, Rick for um, for organising this, uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Essential Photo Pixar Pro. Uh, we've got uh, one of these five-in-one collapsible uh, reflectors to give away, and how we're going to do the giveaway is uh, if you want to be in with a chance between now and the next uh, live broadcast, uh, put a comment in this one. Now you can't put your comments in until this is over, but put a comment and then uh, during the next live broadcast, I will do a live selection. There's a little utility you can use that runs and picks a comment at random from, uh, from there. So whoever it lands on, I'll then contact, get your details, and we'll arrange for Pixel Pro to, uh, to send it out to you. Yes, indeed. Now, quick question on this one. Um, I'm not too sure. We have two. We have two. We have two that can be given away. Oh, right. We have, I've given, I'm sorry, just to, I didn't know whether we'd splitting them or what across two shows. So yeah. there's an option for you. Yeah. Um, I have two of these to give away. I've given away two already on my last live stream. They yeah. are on the way or will be tomorrow mm -hmm. um, to the winners. Um, so Michael and Stephen, uh, congratulations on those. Um, so we have another two because they provided four right. total. Oh, um, brilliant. So <laughs> whether you want to do 
I'll do the other one on another live stream. Okay, yeah. no problem. So yeah. there'll be another one on the next live stream as well. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't um, sure whether you were aware then. With no, you no, no. I, I, when when you told me there was two, I thought it was one for yours, one for no, mine. No, no, two, no, two <laughs> right. each, two each. So, oh, right. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> and what these are, a five-in-one collapsible reflector, mm -hmm. um, 80 by 120 centimetres. The nice thing about these is... Um, Size-wise, they're big enough to use as a diffuser, and um, this could be for still light, for product work, for portraiture, if you want to recreate a window light. Um, I've used them before, hung in front of a product um, on some stands, and I've f fired two strip boxes through them, ratioed in power, and turned and feathered, so you can create different highlight to shadow gradients and ratios across mm -hmm. the scene that you're lighting, so they are very, very useful. I've flown them mm -hmm. on the ceiling. Uh, we all know my studio, eight foot ceilings, but I've flown them above mm -hmm. as a downward fill. Nice thing about these as well, white reflector, silver reflector, diffusion panel. Mm -hmm. The gold one, and you might think, yeah, maybe in the 1980s, but the gold one on these is quite nice because it has a white mm -hmm. weave in, so it is a warm tone, but not as warm as the pure gold. Ah. Um, so they're a very nice yeah. bit of kit, actually. Yeah, and for those of you, I know we've got a few of my Academy members watching. Uh, for those of you who are in the, the Academy, um, I recently uploaded a 20-page uh, set of training notes on uh, available light uh, photography, and that includes uh, how to use uh, filters. So if you're one of the lucky ones who wins this, uh, instructions on how to use it in my uh, in my academy. Oh, there you go. Right. Very, okay. Very so. Very kit. Oh, also one other thing that I use them for as well. I mentioned mm -hmm. this on my live stream is the black cover, which can be used for negative fill to introduce shadow, increase contrast. Is also great for kneeling on or lying on if you're working on location and you don't mm -hmm. want to get dirty. So really handy for that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. Um. Right, yeah, we've just been told that the, the we might need to move the Yeti because uh, okay. you're, you're a bit quieter than or me. Or I just need to shout, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> the, or I need to shut up. <laughs> uh, the problem with moving it halfway in between is that it blocks our view of the, of the screen down here, which we do actually need to keep an eye on. Yeah. We'll work something out for next time, there's it two of us. Maybe a boom, possibly. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get something sorted. Mm -hmm. they, we're, we've got another problem with it at the moment, and that's... Um, that it's so close to the fan on the laptop. Uh, we know there's some noise coming in from that. Right, okay, questions and answers. So let's have a look through our list here of what we've got. Um, first one from Gary Platt. Uh, what's your view of, natural, of neutral density filters which consists of a circular screw on let oh the variable uh, variable, variable type. NDs, yes. yeah variable yeah, NDs yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never actually used one um, I have although um, it's been a while since mm. I've used one um, my use primarily um, has been for video so if you want to shoot some video outside in particular if you're working with a cinema camera DSLR um, then you're going to be at the 180 degree equivalent, 180 degree rule shutter speed, which more often than not, you're shooting at a 30th, that's a 60th. So pretty low, really, on the shutter speeds. And then when you've got a bright ambient light in the sun or what have you, your only other option then, assuming you're at your base ISO, is to stop the lens down, which creatively you may not want for the scene. You know, you might not want to see everything at f16. Mm -hmm. um, so variable NDs are handy for that, where you can dial in, that variable neutral, neutral density mm -hmm. on the lens um, to cope with those changes. A lot of bloggers use them, mm -hmm. um, fitted to the front end of the cameras. You'll see uh, Casey Nice stuff, Peter McKinnon will use them and, and the like. Um, it's just very, very easy to dial that change in. Sometimes you'll catch it in the blogs because they don't edit it out. You see the change when they go inside to outside, so they're handy for that. Can they be used for stills? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, uses for them for stills, if you're using a uh, entry-level camera that has, say, an upper limit on the shutter speed of 4,000th of a second, uh, and maybe your lens won't let you stop down any further, some lenses only go to f16, uh, the Sigma Primes are culprits of that, you may then end up, well, I could do that extra stop. 
and then you could pop in a, a variable ND mm. and dial that in for you. So they have a use for stills. Yeah, definitely. well, the other, the main use I would see for stills and where I normally use an ND filter is uh, with travel photography and particularly with uh, water effect, where you want to get that um, candy floss effect on waterfalls uh, yeah. and on um, uh, fountains and things like that. And that's where they come, come in. Now, as I say, qualifier here, I have never uh, used them. So I, I don't know what it's like. I have heard some people say that there are sort of problems um, uh, with that moving, that you don't get a true, an even darkening of the, um, uh, of the frame with it. How true that is, I don't know. Um, I, think, I think they're fine. I think you've got to pay the money really for a good filter. Mm. And it's true really of any filter. Um, although there's filters I wouldn't bother with personally, UV. Um, but it's you, you're putting a piece of glass in front of more than likely a very expensive lens or more multiple pieces of glass. So mm -hmm. you've got to pony up to get good quality. There are some, even though they are neutral density filters, they still have a warm or colder cast. More than likely a bit of a warm cast to them. So there will be a bit of a colour shift mm -hmm. on them. Um, and that's less of an issue when you pay a little bit more money for them, really. Um, another use for them as well is with flash. Um, if you can't do high-speed sync, if your mm -hmm. flashes don't do that, yeah. you can use a, a, an ND filter. It doesn't have to be a variable, by the way, um, or a variable ND um, to help shoot wider open um, than you would normally have to yeah. uh, within your camera's sync speed at that point. Yeah, okay. I um, uh, hope that's helped a little bit, Gary, um, on that. Um, Next question we have was, it's a, it's a difficult one uh, from Andy Grady. Um, is private studio hire still possible at either or both of your studios at the moment or have you closed down? And it is a difficult one to, to answer. Um, shall, shall I? Go so, for it. Yeah, because I know you're, you're, you're umming and ahhing about this one. Yeah. Um, I... I think I would have to take each one on a case by case basis um, and uh, that would be um, based on on various factors, what the shoot is, what you're intending to shoot here. If it's one person and one subject, um, then I'm more likely to say yes. Um, if it's somebody who has got uh, like uh, yourself, Andy, a, a medical background where you're very aware of uh, what the current risks are and how to mitigate them, then I'd probably be more, more inclined. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a blanket yes or a blanket no um, at the moment for me. Um, if somebody said to me they wanted to bring in... Um, uh, half a dozen people for a shoot and um, uh, run an event here, then the answer would be no. If I'm not able, if I don't feel comfortable running an event myself, yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable somebody else running an event here. Uh, so for example, having one other person in the studio, I've, I've let Rick in, uh, don't know why, but I have, <laughs> uh, that, that's yeah. fine. Um, um, but having a crowd in, probably not, would be yeah. my case. It's difficult in these unprecedented times and with the threat that we're facing. Um, for me personally, there is, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say more of a consideration for it, because you don't want to downplay your consideration mm -hmm. and concerns over it and your stand on it. But for myself, I have an at-risk family member. So mm -hmm. for me... I made the decision to suspend or uh, postpone the workshops and events. Um, I have had a recent hire in uh, in the last couple of days, but now I'm, I'm not so sure what I would do. Uh, maybe on a small hire and if it can be, uh, as I say, if questions can be asked and find out if people have been in contact with someone, the difficulty is thinking that along those lines, no one really knows. You know, no one can be 100% sure and I have to contact clients um, that have weddings coming up as well um, for the same consideration. Uh, do I want to do the jobs? Yes. Do I want to get paid for the jobs? Obviously, yes. 
but I have to consider those that are around me and having somebody at risk it's pause for thought um, so it's going to be a conversation with that person with other people that are involved as well so I mean yeah. do come to me do ask uh, and we can flesh it out and discuss it but there's a lot of unknown really at the moment uh, and we may find that the official standpoints may well change and become a little bit harder or hard line if you will mm. sounds scary but um, if needs must needs must yeah and I think we just need to kind of see how things go I mean by all means come and speak to me and Ian mm. and we can discuss that and um, but we've got to kind of weigh up the risks really and for me personally am I worried about myself no not in my current level of fitness and health am I worried about a family member yes mm -hmm. so it, yeah. it's a big consideration yeah it, it is for all of us right I think that's it for Q&A now let's move on oh I should have said yeah uh, right, the um, the three minute challenge. Uh, you've seen. Um, you've seen me sweat. <laughs> yeah, I I had to pre-record mine. I would have done it live. I'd have been happy to do it live, but that meant that we couldn't. Uh, we'd have each seen each others, and we wanted to do it so that neither of us had seen it's what a the blind others. Test. Blind, blind test. test. So yeah. here, for those who want to know, is mine coming up. So oh, video three minute edit. Right, okay, so I have the image loaded into Lightroom. I've tried very hard not to look at it while I've been getting it in there. So now I shall start the timer and I'll have three minutes to do an edit on it. Going now. Right, okay, it's a portrait image, colour portrait, uh, pink. Uh, so it's going to the develop module. What am I going to do with it? Right, I think first of all I will do make sure all the lens corrections are enabled. Um, so that will sort that out. I think I probably like with this a tighter crop. So I'll just bring that in, take the take that off. And I think I will crop about here. I don't like cropping below the elbows. I think that's a little bit better in a bit tighter uh, on there a good histogram on it uh, over to basic right okay uh, let's have a look at the white balance i'm assuming that was taken with flash so i'm going to set flash white balance uh, on there um, right the shadows i'm going to bring up and that's looking fairly reasonable profile wise I'm wondering whether black and white might work well with this, so I'm going to go with my standard um, black and white profile of black and white 03. Yes, yes, I quite like that, but I do need to bring some more light into those shadows now. Um, I'm just going to bring up the clarity just a little bit uh, on there, a little bit more on the contrast as well. Yes, I prefer that. Do I want a bit of dehaze? No, I don't. Uh, with it, reset that. Uh, I think I'd quite like a little bit of, uh, of a vignette on it. So transform. Um, no, not transform. Where am I going? Right, I am going to effects. Just bring the vignette down just a bit. Well, I should make it quite dark, but then feather it off. How much longer have I got on the counter? I've got a few seconds left. So three minutes goes very quickly when you're doing this. So I would say something along those lines, maybe not quite that dark with that. Can I do a split tone in this time? Add a little bit of color tone on it. It's very, very slightly, a bit of the shadows go to the blue. A little bit like that. No, don't like the split toning. Take those out. No, I think it's just pure black and white on there. Uh, so I think, I think that's going to be my edit. Uh, if I've got a second left, I'll go back to the effects and preserve my highlights down at the bottom here on that post. Oh, and the time is up. So that's my edit done. Right. Well. <laughs> That was hard going. So uh, now 
back live to the studio. Let's have a chat about our two different edits, mine and Rick's. Right, and we're back. Uh, right, okay, so, um, as you can see, uh, two very different uh, edits. What we now have on uh, the screen uh, behind us, um, or in front of us, as far as we're concerned, uh, is um, is yeah. the three different edits of uh, of the image. So here, find the, find the mouse. Here on the left hand side is Peter's. Um, no, that's Rick's. That's, mine. that's Rick's. Yeah. The one in the middle is mine, and the one on the end is uh, is Peter's. Um, I, th I think it's quite interesting that we've we've approached it differently. We're, both myself and Rick, we've gone quite contrasty um, with the image compared to Peter's. Um, there's not where, uh, yeah, we've got more contrast in there. If yeah. you look at the shadows that we have on the cheek um, cast by the hair, mm. uh, and within the hair, yes, there is a little bit more contrast in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would say you tend to edit with more contrast than me generally. Yes, I do. I, um, I do. I have a quite speaking. contrasty style yeah. um, uh, with my, and particularly with my black and whites. Uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 I like black and whites to be really contrasting. I, I mean, I tend to edit myself personally. So, I mean, most of my work is portrait work, but I tend to edit black and whites more contrasted than colour stuff because mm. um, it lends itself to yeah. that. Um, you know, it's all about highlight, mid-tone, shadow at the end of the day. Um, well, yeah, three, yeah. three, you know, different compositions in terms of the crop. Yeah. Um, at that point, yeah. um, I mean, I said to Ian earlier on, looking at his edit on the black and white, I wasn't sure on the black and white. Mm. Again, these things are all subjective at the end of the day, but I felt that the colour and tones of the dress. I'm going to say, I mean, it's a dress, but it looks like a yeah. dress, or maybe a top if you're wearing jeans. I don't know. I have to yeah, tell. I can't tell. Um, it's me trying to look over there. It starts <laughs> to blend into certain parts of skin tones for me, and it becomes a little bit too similar to work. Um, yeah, well, for, you see, for me, I I have always held the, the view with um, with images that if somebody is dressed in a colour that I try to, to use the background to complement the colour rather than contrast. Right. And it were, to me, the, the pink and the blue were were too contrasty and so to to actually bring them closer together black and white was the obvious uh, choice for me uh, on that um, in terms of the um, uh, the basic image and uh, some uh, some feedback for for Peter uh, on on that it's 35 millimeter lens we we determined wasn't yeah, it yeah I picked up on this as soon as I saw it um, a 35 millimeter lens um, it's not that you can't shoot portraits with this I mean you've got environmental portraits you could have portraits of two people so your perspective changes with your working distance having to change um, at that point but for one person up close I think it can depending on mm -hmm. how the person stood and posed and turned towards the camera can be a little bit too wide at times I mean, if you're, I don't know what camera it was shot on, whether it was a, um, a crop sensor or full frame or what have you. I th mm -hmm. It looks like it may have been a crop sensor, but... I can um, soon tell you if I not sure. go over if and... have a quick look. I was going to have a look at that when I was doing my editing and then suddenly realised, I haven't got time. <laughs> no, you haven't with those <laughs> sort of challenges. So, right, Lyra module, metadata, metadata and... Does it say? Oh, do, 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 do. let's get the full uh, XF up <laughs> on <laughs> there. <laughs> it's a Nikon. So a crop sensor. So it's a 1.5 um, for Nikon yeah. on the format. Uh, I thought it was. Um, mm. It doesn't look quite like it would be full frame because for the same mm. for the same composition full frame, you're going to be closer. Yeah. Um, so focal mm. length at 35 millimeter is yeah. is 52, which is it's on the. It's a little bit lower than I would work with for portraits. Yeah. I, I normally say se 70 to uh, 120, that sort of area. Now, it, it's not that you can't shoot portraits with, say, 50 mil equivalents, mm. which 35 mil for the APS-C format, um, or 50 millimeter full frame. However, you need to consider your working distance and how the person is shaped, body shape wise, and how they're turned and posed towards the camera. Uh, because closest elements to the lens will seem larger, you'll get some foreshortening, some distortion, and what have you. So you've got to be careful where you place them. 
um, at that point. Um, ultimately, it's about your working distance and perspective mm. for it. Um, you may have been in a room where you, you've got 15 people stood behind you waiting to shoot and you can't move back. I, I get the different scenarios may dictate what you use lens-wise as well. Yeah. Um, so it's not kind of pointing the finger at you here, Peter. It's just a couple of points of feedback. One thing I have noticed as well, now whether you would have had control of this during the shoot on the night, if it was say a meet or a club event, um, again, I don't know enough backstory, so let us know in the comments if you'd like. Um, F11, loads of depth of field, I get that. However, on that format of a camera and that size of sensor, I would um, work more than likely F8 to 5.6 range because you're going to get a sharper image. You'll lose a bit of depth of field, but I think you would have had, you would have had enough at F8. You've got to be careful of diffraction starting to show. So it's softening um, of the uh, image. I don't, I don't think we can complain uh, much about the sharpness it's not, on that. It's, uh, it's not bad, but yeah. you will see it. If you do two comparable images, same scenario, same mm. subject, and shoot wider open. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there are times when you need to shoot stop down for the depth of field required, yeah. totally get that. Um, you'll, see, you'll see the image start to soften because the diffraction mm -hmm. limiting aperture on that format of camera is gonna be much lower than it would be on full frame. Yeah, what I would say about depth of field with yeah. that is again it's personal preference but i'd have liked to see the subject further away from the wall mm. um so that the wall is slightly out of focus behind yes. to give a depth to it okay. because that is is bang on in focus oh there. yeah 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 that um, that f-stop definitely yeah um if the background was small and let's say you you're struggling maintaining her within that background that you've got then you need to step back and go longer length yeah yeah, narrow your field for, of further away and zoom in would yeah. uh, would do that, and that's also more flattering for your subject as well. With it, uh, lighting wise, a couple of things I would say uh, about it. Again, we don't know whether you had control over the lighting. Um, there's obviously some lighting going on there because I can see the um, uh, the, the catch lights. Uh, it looks like it's an umbrella fill and. Well, the main actually looking like it's using an umbrella for the main light it's either that or an octa given the shape of the oh, catch possibly yeah say, could be but... an octa um uh with with a fill now um i i tend to like a little bit more shadowy than that and i liked for me i like to have a little bit more i suppose it's what i was trying to do in the edit adding that vignetting into the background mm. uh, where the background's just not isn't all even there's there's some uh, light difference to it yeah i mean it's contrast overall in the image it's contrast of exposure on your subject and then the values of your exposure mm. also to the background as well inverse square law um will play a big part uh, working further away from the background will help you if you can yeah. change those light distances most of the time you can i do it if i come to one of ian's yeah you always, always changes my things. lights because um, i like a different level of contrast mm. i want the fall off to be different yeah um so, so i'll make that change mm. but um, again, it depends on the scenario that you're in, ultimately. And I get that you can't do that in every single scenario. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I think that's covered about everything yeah. for that. Oh, one quick addition for that, if I may, I'm um, sorry, um, mm. Peter as well, is, again, this may have been dictated by where the portrait was made, if it was under a group conditions, because it's not, it's not like a one-to-one -one shoot at that point where you can get to know the person better, but... I'd like to see a bit more work on engagement from the subject and expression um, within mm -hmm. a portrait. To me, it does kind of feel like it was shot at an event where multiple people may have been shooting that same set as well. Um, and that's just interaction and one-on-one -on -one time, which I totally understand is quite mm -hmm. difficult to do um, in those scenarios. Uh, but yeah. I think you'll get a better portrait for it and, and sometimes you're talking to them more than you are shooting um, to get there really yeah okay so let's uh, let's wrap this all up now nope. um and we're uh, when we're just about done um yeah a few thanks uh, first of all first of all thank you everyone for uh, for joining us and watching right. uh it's, it's yeah it's, it's been <laughs> great the first one. Yeah. yeah oh uh, well i um uh, just want to check see if there's any comments from Peter on that uh, that image because uh, we did ask him 
putting the comments about it. Um, he um, did. He did reply just with his crop sensor D seventy two. Ah, right. Not, okay, nothing else. You, you, yeah. you got it there. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Right. So thanks for watching, folks. Thanks um, uh, to Peter. I've got that on the next slide, actually. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Um, you'll get uh, uh, notifications of the next one. Yeah, thank you for Peter for allowing us to tear your image to pieces and to mess around with it. Uh, no. Now, I hope you found it helpful, um, different perspective on things. It is all subjective. Um, and thanks for those to the others who submitted. Uh, I will get round to those on, uh, on future uh, broadcast. If anybody yeah. else wants to submit, and, let me know. Mm, yeah, and, and one last thing on that. Someone mentioned earlier in the chat, um, blah, 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 blah. Andy, you mentioned, ah, uh, Rick, Rick has seen my image before it was taken at his studio. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly, I've got an idea which image it may be, but I don't know 100% for mm -hmm. sure. Don't worry about that, still send them in. Um, I could say for the edits, which, yeah. I mean, I may not be here on the next edit that he does, I don't know. Yeah. But, don't worry about whether they've been shot at a workshop at mine or at Ian's in the yeah. past. Just get them sent in. It's not really a problem. Oh, no, no, we, no. Can, we, we can cope with that. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, do let me know what you want to see in the future. Um, in here, I'm going to carry on with some of the beginner stuff in the middle of, uh, of each one um, uh, for, for people. And finally, really, just stay safe, folks. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, follow, follow the advice. And um, if you are concerned, then find someone to talk it over with. And do try and tune in on Sunday when I'm going to talk about this, this whole situation a lot more. Try and offer some practical advice to people about what you can do. How, uh, there are uh, photographers I know who are concerned, I can't, I can't shoot, I can't go out. And like that well let's talk about it next time yeah on um, absolutely and um, I mean I won't be here next time so I will be exercising social distance I'm kidding <laughs> but I can't make it unfortunately um, but again you know stay safe take care and help take care of each other help each other mm -hmm. if you are worried at all reach out to either myself or Ian um, even if it's a phone call or what have you we can sort out some time to sit and have a chat if needs be yeah yeah, a problem shared is a problem halved at the end of the day mm -hmm. um, and let's just all take care of each other and, and you know, and heed the advice that's being given yeah. yeah so that brings us to the end and uh, as ever thanks for watching and until next time keep making great photos <laughs> thanks for watching guys thanks for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button down here so you'll get notified of future videos up here is a playlist of videos similar to this one and here's one specific video that i think you will like whereas down here is one that youtube thinks you'll like until next time keep making great photos bye for now